Hey there, and welcome to today's edition of 10 TV Plus. I'm your host, meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. And man, this polar vortex is certainly living up to its name. Getting a live look out there today. We do have some sunshine here. This was actually taken this morning from Logan County. Uh, some folks out there on the ski trails. And then as uh, we kind of take a different camera angle, few people out there. But on a Monday morning, it's not surprising to me that they aren't too busy. You see that we do have uh, bright sunny skies, at least out there in Logan County. So again, weather headlines. We are going to be tracking some extreme cold through about Wednesday. How cold? Air temperatures below zero for some of you, but this right here is the most important thing. Wind chills negative 10 to negative 20 here as we go into the next few mornings. Good news though, whew, by Thursday we finally come out of it as we get some milder air that starts kind of working back into the region. Now this is today. As we head into this afternoon, we don't even get above zero for the wind chill index. As we head into this evening though, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, we start cooling things off yet again, so get ready for that. When we talk about this idea of the wind chill, more specifically, what are we talking about here? So that's when you take the air temperature, but then you factor in the wind, okay? What does it feel like on your skin? So let's understand the wind chill a little bit better here, okay? Our bodies lose heat through convection, all right? And when there's not much wind, whatever the outside air temperature is, it's what it feels like to you. So if the outdoor temperature is 20 degrees, there's no wind, your body can build up a layer of insulation around the skin that actually makes you feel pretty comfortable. But what happens though is when you start kind of factoring in the wind, all of a sudden that plummets here. So let's give a different scenario, okay? Let's say that the outside air temperature is 20 degrees, but let's say we are factoring in, factoring in maybe a 10, 15, 20 mile per hour wind, in this scenario, we're using a wind of 20 miles per hour. That insulated layer of warm air near the skin gets blown away by the wind. The issue is that your body's got to work harder because remember, your body's got to maintain that internal temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And so your body's going to shiver and it's going to work extra, extra hard to produce that heat. And that's why it's a lot more uncomfortable. That is why Frostbite hypothermia can set in much faster when we are dealing with temperatures this cold out here. All right, so if the outside temperature is 20, the wind is 20 miles per hour, it would feel like only four degrees out there. Now, the good news is that this is not about to last all week long. So today's Monday, today's high temperature around, 20, uh, around uh, 12 degrees. That is actually some new model data. If you watch over the weekend or if you watched last week, we were saying, hey, Monday and Tuesday, we might not even get out of the single digits. That's no longer the case. So now things are going to be a little bit milder today, but we don't climb above freezing at all this week. By Friday, we're up to 31, still just below freezing. It's not really until Saturday that we actually start to make any type of significant progress with the cold. Today, though, we are going to be looking at some gusty winds, and that's the problem, okay? We have that double whammy. Not only do we have the cold, we've got some breezy conditions out there. That will be the case as we go into the afternoon. As we head into 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, the winds eventually do subside, but these northern cities, once we get north of I-70, we're going to be clinging to those gusty winds today. And so these are the cities and towns that will be much colder feel much colder here, whereas down to the south, we don't have quite as much wind that we will be contending with. Tonight, the winds subside, and then the temperatures will plummet as we end up uh, getting rid of the cloud cover. Now, as we look at today, this afternoon, if you are in the metro area, or really, if you're anywhere north and west of I-20, you're not going to get out of these sub-zero wind chill indices. If you head down to the south, okay, maybe places like Piketon, you guys might get into the single digits above zero, but for everybody else, it's going to be bone chill and cold. And as we head into this evening, we're not looking at much progress either. As we head towards 5.30 p.m., still bitterly cold out there. Tonight, we're going to be looking at wind chills dipping down to around negative 10 to negative 15. The good news, though, is that tomorrow we don't have quite as strong of winds as what we saw today. So that is one thing that's definitely going to work out in our favor. Now, Let's talk the wind chill and frostbite times. So on a day like today, where the wind chill is between zero and negative 20, it only takes about a half hour for frostbite to set in. 
as you get down to negative 20, negative 30, so on and so forth, obviously it takes less time for that frostbite to set in. So folks in the Dakotas and northern Minnesota, they're down in this territory right now. So folks out there, we're talking frostbite in as little as five minutes. Thankfully, we're not looking at air that cold, but we are going to be in this category for at least the next couple of days. So just kind of get ready for that. Now, this polar vortex is something that we haven't seen in a couple of years. You can see right now, we've got the pink on the map. We've got the purple on the map. All areas in that pinkish purple color are being impacted by this polar vortex. Now, this is Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, we get the worst of it. But then look at this. As we head through Wednesday and we head into Thursday, we can say bye to the polar vortex. Now we're getting some warmer air that's going to start moving in from the south as we head into later on this week. So that is good. Also, another fun, interesting weather tidbit for you here. Today is January the 20th, Inauguration Day. Look at this right here. All right. As we look at the calendar year, when do we typically have our coldest temperatures? Right about now, January the 20th is literally the peak of the coldest air that we get during the year. The average temperature will increase the 33 degrees a month from now, and then a month and a half from now will increase to about 38. So if you don't like the cold, this is really the worst of it. And then we start kind of coming out of it as we head into the next few weeks. Today though, we are going to be looking at some stubborn clouds developing as we head into the afternoon. As we head into this evening, five o'clock, still holding on to some clouds, there's a slight possibility that we do get a flurry or two tomorrow morning, but then take a look at this by 6 a.m., we have the clouds, but they're pretty thin, so that will allow things to still be quite cold out here. 6 a.m. though, from Kenton down to Bell Fountain, out towards Urbana, Springfield, we have a slight uptick in the chances of snow. And then as we head towards uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, that threat is really going to be quite low, but there could be a possibility of a flurry heading into the day tomorrow. And then, of course, we get rid of the clouds as we head into tomorrow night. For today, though, we are going to be looking at temperatures around 10 degrees. I think we do climb up to double digits uh, for areas in the metro. Some of you guys outside of town, you're heading off to Logan County or up towards Delaware County. You guys might not actually make it out of the uh, single digits, so it all depends on where your particular location is. Now, with how cold it is, do we have another risk of a polar vortex? At least not the answer is no, not in the next two weeks. So we are looking at slightly below average temperatures from Maine down to the mid-Atlantic states. And then above average as we head off to the west, the yellow and the oranges on the map, we're looking at abnormally mild air. Here we're kind of in the cusp, meaning that we have equal chances of temperatures being slightly above normal or slightly below normal as we head into the end of the month. And by the way, this outlook from the Climate Prediction Center goes until February the 4th. Take a look at this right here, rainfall chances. All right, so you have the light green on the map. Now we're looking at a slightly above average chance of rain, but then look down to the deep south, Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana. Things could be a lot more wet as we work our way further down to the deep south. The average high for this time of the year is about 37. We get to that by Saturday and Sunday. But man, it's going to take a lot of effort to get there Monday and Tuesday. We're going to be looking at temperatures around 12 to 13 degrees, then eventually climbing out of it as we head towards fr Thursday and Friday. Take a look at this, though. All right. And you know how I was just saying we're not looking at a, another cold outbreak anytime soon. Here's the date down below. So now we're going to be looking at this going out for the next 10 days. Once we get to about Friday, we finally get back up to normal and there's no looking back through the weekend and into next week. If anything, we're actually looking at temperatures being slightly above normal as we head into the next six to 10 days. So that's a good sign if you do not like some of this cold air that we are dealing with. In other news, today is a big day for Buckeye fans, a championship forecast here. And folks heading down to Atlanta, if you are hopping on a flight this afternoon and hopes to get down there for the game, it is going to be cold down there. 29 degrees here for the pregame. And then look at that by halftime and for the end of the game, temperature is still pretty cold. It is an indoor game, but if you are traveling back and forth to the airport, uh, just make sure that you know that even though it's in Georgia, it is still going to be downright cold for fans down in that part of the country. 
Seven day forecast goes like this for today. We are going to be tracking the cold out there. Notice that as we head into the afternoon, we will be looking at a few clouds building on in. We lose the clouds tonight. That's like yanking off the blanket. That's going to allow things to get that much cooler for tomorrow morning. And then as we look here at your Tuesday forecast, take a look at this. The wind chill, not quite as bad tomorrow, but still below zero here by one o'clock in the afternoon. Negative three is what it will feel like here on your Tuesday. Wednesday morning, negative four air temperature, but we're not going to have a whole lot of wind. All right, and so because we don't have a lot of wind, wind chill will only be negative nine here on Wednesday, which actually is not as bad as today. And then as we head towards the five o'clock hour, finally, for the first time in three days, we'll climb up to single digits above uh, zero heading into Wednesday. I'm not looking at any major storms anytime soon, but on Sunday we are going to be tracking a clipper system that kind of rolls in off the Great Lakes. This is not going to produce a lot of rain or snow, but we could be looking at a few snow showers towards Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next week. We get rid of that. And then as we get a look here at the rest of the weekend, temperatures will be in the upper end of the 30s. Nighttime lows will be in the teens and 20s, which that will feel like a heat wave compared to what we have felt in the past. That does it for me here on 10 TV plus tune in for Jerry Martz tonight on 10 TV news starting at 4, 5 and 6 p.m.